Oh yeah. I don't know what it is about books. Like you don't have a very specific image of them, but then you do at mm-hmm. the same time. So it's like you get disappointed no matter what. <laughs> there's there's just no way to win <laughs> if you read the book first. <laughs> Oh, I guess I'm taking over. Okay. Sorry. Question comes from JS Fairy underscore on the Twitter. Uh, they a question for Hedig, movies or books? And would you recommend or what do you have to recommend to watch or read? One, two, three. Books. books. Wow. Just books. Okay. That's movies surprising. will never well for me, I, I don't know. It's different for everybody, but I just feel like the imagination provides so much more hmm. detail. Hmm. And it, it it fits the story to our narrative so that we can consume it the way that we want. It to. makes it more personal. Right. Yeah. And also, there's no budget on our imagination. Oh. Yes. So the sky is the limit in actuality. Yes. Whereas in movies, there is a physical budget. True. Yeah. I will say though, I remember when the, the Twilight series was trendy. I refused to read it. So I was like, no, everybody's reading Twilight. I want to be different. And then when I decided to start reading it, you know, all the movies had already come out. So I couldn't picture the characters in my own mind. I had, in my mind, I saw the actors. That's so crazy. Yeah. So it was like, my But, but I mean, I don't know. For, well, I don't know. Because I'm an avid horror fan and I read plenty of horror books, but you know, Sometimes like, you know, if you're just bored, it's kind of hard to sit down and read an entire book in like two hours. So, I mean, sometimes movies aren't bad if you're just looking for quick entertainment, I guess. I but. think movies are good for like background music. Yeah. I'll just put on like a random movie or like a Twitch stream and then just like keep it on as background not to feel lonely. You know, Home Alone. <laughs> yeah, okay. But books for me… Like I actually read Twilight before the movies came out. Mm. And I thought Edward Cullen… Looked completely different. Oh yeah. I don't know what it is about books. Like you don't have a very specific image of them. But then you do at mm-hmm. the same time. So it's like you get disappointed no matter what. <laughs> there's, there's just no way to win if you read the book first. So oh, maybe you watch the movie first and then read the book. But then that kind of spoils the book too. Because then the book doesn't feel as good. And well, you just imagine but like, sometimes Ooh. movies and books delve differently in the plots. Like some, if something True. was originally a movie and then becomes a book… The book typically goes by the movie. But sometimes if something is a book and then becomes a movie… Sometimes the movie strays from that. Things get cut out. Sure. Yeah. Because sure, sure, Coraline… Sure. Uh, you know Coraline? No. It's a stop motion thing by Leica Studios. That's one of my favorite books and movies of all time. The book is quite different from the movie. Because the book is actually a lot scarier. Mm. Like Coraline's meant to be like, you know, like a PG… PG-13. I don't know. Like kids, young adult movie. Mm. But the book is a lot scarier than the movie. Not that it was scary to me, but in retrospect of like the themes and the detail. Right. A lot scarier. Ladies and gentlemen, did you enjoy that episode? If you did, you can always listen to the full episodes on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And also, do not forget to subscribe and follow this channel. Also, turn on notifications. 